right, thank you very much, uh, Press, for coming out again, as you saw, uh, for your relay to our country. Uh, today, the 23rd of August uh, 2022, we have almost a full cabinet uh, established. The Marape Rosso uh, cabinet is now in place for the full function of the National Executive uh, Council and the Executive Government uh, to be serving our country. Uh, it was a long week or two and I just want to apologize to our country who showed extraordinary patience in allowing for the process to be completed. It was not just picking heads uh, to place behind portfolios but it was about structuring the portfolios and the executive government so that we deliver to outcomes we have committed to our country and to our people. Time is not of essence. We have been doing the same thing many times for the last 47 years now, going 47. Last week we had a very exhaustive process of assessing how we've come in the last three years. The agenda to fight for greater benefit of our country, not just benefit in terms of the economic expense that we want, but more importantly, our people on the ground receiving better services, feeling secured, uh, living in a country that is well served by the executive government. We wanted to match the structure of our portfolios consistent with our policy we have gave to the elections to our people who mandated us to be in these positions as well as then in the next week or two reordering and restructuring our public service so that it serves and it's congruent or in line or in harmony to the way we want to serve our country better. You would have noted a few key ministries of were amalgamated or folded. Uh, that is consistent with a view to ensure that we increase efficiency in the system instead of a system becoming impediment, tedious, cumbersome, stopping flow of executive directions that are lawful to those sectors to make it work in turn our people being served, whether it's in the law and order space or in the public service sector proper or in growing our economy. Uh, we did spent a lot of time and I just want to thank in this instance our coalition partners and the deep rank and file of the Pangu party who were able to give me the freedom that I would need to ensure I interface not just with the appointees who are here or the political leaders but more importantly with the public service who are here almost perpetually they've been here since 1975 and so we had to interface with them to ensure the portfolio alignments are made to ensure the functional alignments are done in the departments and agencies and we get to work. I just want to thank again our leaders from our coalition partners, including uh, our members of Pango Party. We all stand here. This uh, cabinet lineup, uh, in my view, tries to represent the entire country. Whilst the political equations and formulas are there, we try to be fair to the length and breadth of our country. We are a diverse nation. Every province must have a say on the table. And I just want to, in this instance, apologize to the people of Manus and to the people of Hela who don't have ministers in cabinet. I will try to represent them. But outside of Manus and Hela province, you have every province in our country represented in cabinet representing cabinet. There is no ministry that is ranked higher or ministry that is length, uh, ranked lower. Every ministers are equal, every portfolio and ministries are equally important for the service of our country. Uh, today you see leaders from all parts of our country. They qualify themselves into this portfolio representing not just their districts and provinces but in totality our country and we've spread uh, them in places in our view goes to achieve some campaign promises we made to our people. Number one, for instance, securing safety of our people. Today you would have seen there is no mention of police portfolio, 
or CIS portfolio. It is amalgamated into one internal security uh, portfolio. The Honorable Peter Siamalili, uh, Jr. is Minister Response for Internal Security, and we will get on with the business of trying to fix our country's security issues right across our country in a one-stop approach where a minister has his pulses on both police, uh, CIS, and other associate affiliates that, that should work towards securing the safety of our country's uh, our people, business, and our community. So uh, this sort of restructures has taken place. Today you would have noted uh, my name being, being associated with the planning ministry. That is the intention going forward. In the meantime, the administrative functions of planning would remain with finance, but we will work towards by next year. Planning department is reduced to an office, functions, greater functions transferred to finance in as far as cash disbursements are concerned. We got some functions in Treasury and the major macro level planning directional for our country will come back to Provinces office and we work removing three big departments and three big ministers in a place that sometimes has become in itself cumbersome for accountability, cumbersome for delivery to the intentions of our budgets, our government policies and our country's constitution. That is a second example. You would have seen us amalgamating the transport sector into one policy as well as operation for civil aviation and uh, the, the uh, uh, marine, 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 marine uh, transport sector. It now comes under one portfolio. Uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Walter Snowbelt has carried over that portfolio. Uh, finance, by the way, the Honorable Randall Piter is now migrating to finance. He will take charge of our country's finances to ensure uh, both Treasury uh, by Honorable Yen Ling Saki and finance <coughs> under uh, Honorable Rainbow Paita is kept to uh, serve in the most efficient manner uh, without compromising the safety of our good governance in both finance and treasury offices. Uh, we also, uh, in, in, in like manner, uh, not folded this time but split it. Uh, split the agricultural sector, agricultural livestock in four different portfolios in a targeted approach as we committed to our people going rural, growing the economy, getting our people engaged. Uh, agriculture yeah. and livestock is where our people are. We split into four portfolios. Uh, the agriculture ministry uh, help will be held by the Honorable Aya Tambu, will have uh, lesser function, especially the detachments of oil palm to the Honorable Francis Manake, the detachment of uh, coffee to the Honorable Joe Cooley, the detachment of livestock to the Honorable uh, Seki Agisa. These are direct targets to increase productivity in this sector so that we replace imports that we're importing into our country and we increase production for supply of our domestic needs in as far as agriculture sector is concerned, but also more importantly, have an export ramp up in what used to be a core PNZ industry before, but along the way we have lost focus on agriculture. This government is putting money where its mouth is. We are splitting this into four portfolios. We will give targets. Coffee minister produce this number of bags. Oil palm minister produce this number of outputs. Uh, livestock, stop import of livestock anymore. The easiest place for us to go into livestock production in our country. Livestock and rice alone has almost over a billion kina capital flight every year. This is a targeted uh, intervention by the way these leaders with me in our Lolowata retreat have uh, discussed, taught to help make big interventions in those spaces. Uh, and of course, I will have time, a formal press release is being released to uh, all of you uh, to, 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 uh, to know as to what we are doing. But in, in succinctly, uh, we have structured this cabinet in a manner in which we secure safety of our people foremost, number one, in as far as internal security is concerned, we focus on target areas to grow our economy where our people are. And growing the economy also sees us establishing at a very senior level. The Honorable Richard Maru comes in as Minister for International Trade and Foreign Investment. We specially created this so that we have one minister as a target on bringing this in. What you have seen today in the structure of this cabinet lineup and the structure, structure of our portfolios is to grow the economy, 
securing the safety of our country and hopefully good ministers who have expertise in the health sector, expertise in the health education sector and expertise in every other sector has been placed in key areas to ensure our people get saved better and our people progresses. Let me have the privilege to announce the full line of our cabinet uh, and I just want to uh, uh, confirm the Honorable John Rosso becomes uh, our Lands Fiscal Planning and Urbanization Minister. Uh, Minister Duma uh, becomes our State Enterprise Minister or remains a State Enterprise Minister by the way. We've consolidated all state business into one spot for accountability, for performance measure and for growth. Tomorrow onwards he would announce us uh, profit for the first time in as many years Telecom would have made. That is considered leadership in a progressive manner. Uh, he would announce this to our country. He remains at uh, State on Enterprise. We got the Honorable Yen Lik Saki remaining at Treasury. Uh, one of our senior with us, uh, the Honorable Soro Eoi. He will now watch over uh, what used to be called Minister for Intergovernment Relations. Uh, we've now renamed it again back to provincial and local level government. There are many, many systematic impediments, especially functional alignment with the national government and the sub-national government. We know exactly what needs to be done. Uh, and he bringing his experience also in the public sector. Uh, uh, he will uh, settle well in his portfolio and try to address some of those structural imbalances and impediments we have between national government, provincial governments and districts. The Honorable Soroy Oe goes to the space. Uh, Minister Rainbow Paita will be finance and implementation. We focus on purely getting out work as budgeted for to intended service uh, sector or uh, implementation agencies. And by the way, we will resuscitate the National Monitoring Authority at arm's length from finance, at arm's length from anyone to fully work to get out to ensure government programs get attended to or uh, reported back to us. The Honorable uh, Richard Maru uh, is now Minister for International Trade and Investment. This is a specific creation. Just like we split uh, agriculture into uh, four portfolios, uh, we're creating this one targeted at specific uh, foreign investments to come into a country. We'll have a one-stop entry. No more carpet beggars coming all over the place. Uh, no more genuine investors coming in but do not know where to go. The entry port is through the ministry that the Honorable Richard Maru will lead so that they can come in. He will take custody of our special economic zone <coughs> concepts, some of the uh, specialized uh, uh, petroleum park, uh, specialized marine park we have for fisheries in our country that involves large scale foreign investments to come in. The Honorable Richard Maru, who is a very experienced minister, by the way, will get to work in this space. Uh, the Honorable uh, Justin Chachenko uh, will now be our foreign affairs minister, uh, dealing with our country and, and, and our foreign relations. Uh, he will also have uh, custody of him in protocols and events uh, and will be associated with his, with his uh, portfolio. The Honorable Don Polia comes back into cabinet, very experienced uh, uh, leader in our country. Uh, he served in many portfolios before. Uh, he will move into a very key sector. In my view, needs strong leadership. He will go into the higher education sector. Last term of parliament, in the three years we've been together, we made some substantial reforms. We brought the lower education, especially technical colleges, uh, to be now part of the higher education space. Uh, I think the Honorable Don Polia not only has the muscles, but more importantly the intelligence to ensure this sector gets to work. I text him this morning, brother, it's a sector that needs your full commitment uh, because the future of our country is in the education space. Get to work to make sure higher education gives us 20,000 spaces in the next 10 years. Higher education gets to revamp its curriculum, to make curriculum relevant, compatible, to assist the economy grow, to be involved in the economy, as well as filling the labor market space, not just here in our country, but the Australian marketplace, as well as others in our region. So the Honorable Don Polia gets into this uh, this, uh, this important portfolio. Uh, the Honorable Solan Medicine uh, from Rural PNG, uh, part of our Connect PNG focuses, uh, is now in works and highway uh, portfolio. He will now be taking over the works and uh, 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 highway uh, ministry or portfolio. 
the Honorable Solar Medicine at Tetema goes in, into this important portfolio to drive our Connect ENG focus. Uh, the Honorable Minister Pila Niniki uh, remains at Justice uh, Department and uh, he's a lawyer, so he will, is our nation's Attorney General, a very experienced uh, minister in that context. The Honorable Walter Snowbelt becomes Transport and Civil Aviation. We combine both, both sectors at a policy level as well as implementation level. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in that. Uh, he brings to the table his drive to get things done. Honorable Jimmy Guru remains in education. Uh, education is by background. He started some of the work in the last three years. We remain him there to ensure it is progressed. The Honorable Joe Sugi, uh, public servant by background, uh, former top administrator of our country, he remains in the public service. There will be substantial reform in the public sector. I just want to take this time to inform our public sectors, public servants. Waigani is bloated. We will right-size Waigani, and much of this will be transferred to the provinces and to the districts. And uh, the Honorable Joe Sungi will remain there. Uh, we will work in partnership with Governor Jufa's committee. There are some important recommendations coming through, one of which is a contract-based appointment to all our public servants. doesn't matter you at the rank and file or up at the top, contract-based link to KPIs. Uh, this is something uh, we intend to do, and the Honorable Joe Sungi is now at the place. The Honorable Sally Waipo becomes our Forest Minister. Uh, the Honorable Sally Waipo is a Ted Tema. He, his electorate has one of PNG's first and successful vineyard plant. It's now currently exercising our government's policy on downstream processing. Uh, he lives in the electorate, he's part of the process. Uh, that complements our drive to now migrate our forest harvest to not just run log export but going straight into downstream within the next two three years i put all our industries on warning uh not on warning rather on on uh, on, uh, on advice uh, uh, notice whatever it is uh, i think join us now we're not going to chase you away you're in the sector right with us to the downstream sector i want to add value to our resources export finished product to all our international markets and it is about time we step into this space no more ifs and buts uh, the honorable henry amuli remains in the commerce and industry sector uh, he will uh, work uh, to grow our sme uh, it just came in, in in the sunset of the last uh, parliament uh, he continues in this space the honorable henry amuli of course the honorable peter similarly is now minister for internal security combining all uh, the two key portfolios and other associate, uh, associate sectors to make our internal security come better and, and we hope to resource uh, th those sectors. Uh, I'd like to appreciate the placement of Dr. Uh, Lena Tom to the health sector. Uh, I think it's about time uh, we take leadership of this. Uh, we thank the uh, former minister, the Honorable Jelta Wong. He uh, did his absolute best in the pandemic stage. Uh, but <coughs> the health of our people uh, is a bigger issue. Uh, the health department is a key social sector. If the nation is healthy, then the nation is wealthy. And so the Honorable Dr. Lino Tom goes to this sector. We will have a lot of resource transferred to the health department facing our 2025-2026 timeline to get the health sector moving in the right space. Dr. Kobe Bumario. Our second doctor in cabinet uh, will work in the housing portfolio. We have a lot of program coming up in lands and housing combined. Uh, he is now being brought into cabinet for the first time. Uh, the Honorable Jason Peter, member for Huon Gulf, congratulations on him. He came in from the uh, United Resource Party uh, uh, distributions. He is now Minister for Community Development, Religion and Youth. The Honorable Timothy Masiu minister, remains Minister for Community uh, Information and Communication Technology. The Honorable Jelta Wong uh, becomes our Minister for Fisheries and Marine Resources. The Honorable uh, Windaki remains our Minister for Defense. Uh, the Honorable E.C. Henry Leonard remains our Minister for Culture and Tourism. And the Honorable Aya Tambua is now brought in uh, to be Minister for Agriculture in as far as policy and uh, agricultural drive in the other places in our focus for export replacement uh, and also increasing uh, uh, 
the import replacement and increasing export rather. So the Honorable Ayatambua brings into uh, the fray uh, freshness and vigor and energy for this key sector. We want to uh, ramp up for it to be a substantial, if not a major sustainable contributor to our economy, not just now, but more importantly, forever into the perpetual future. Minister Seki Agisa, uh, we have a lot of grass and land in Western Province that neighbors Indonesia, the biggest beef eating country in the whole world, and Australia. Uh, his strategic place as Minister for Livestock, a dedicated task will be given to him, a budget support for us to unwind the potential of livestock in our country for a nation that can has enough grass. How comes we importing beef and all this food that we can and, and animals we could we, we could uh, grow here? So all living things uh, will be under his watch. But more importantly, our target to livestock, poultry, uh, piggery. Uh, the Honourable Segi Agisa, it's a new uh, uh, platform, but Livestock Diploma Corporation, he will be in charge of you, and we will get to work right away on what he must do to ensure in the immediate future we become sufficient in as far as production of our poultry and meat is concerned and no more importing from outside and we must be exporting to the market uh, close by home. Uh, the Honorable Francis Manake becomes Minister for Oil Palm. Oil Palm is will be again just like livestock given specific target. Oil Palm is a big sector. We want to have a targeted approach. Our country's grasslands and our country's uh, uh, we have so much plain that is sitting doing nothing. We will work with him, give him target to get out there in a big way, expand oil palm as well as the existing oil palm businesses, uh, get to work on them, make them <coughs> remain number one, in, in fact, uh, grow bigger, better going forward into the future. The Honorable Joe Cooley becomes Minister for Coffee. Just like oil palm, coffee and oil palm gets uh, prominence now. Uh, cacao and copra will remain with the Minister of Agriculture. This Four big crops, traditional Papua New crops have lost uh, focus over the last 30, 40 years. We want to bring them back to the table. The Honorable Joe Cooley, no other work but coffee, coffee, coffee alone. I want to drink Finnish coffee made in Goroka, made in Hagen, made in Lei, uh, made in Popondeta in our own country for us to export to the Chinese market and the Asian market. Uh, he's now given the task of just sleeping, talking about coffee. Waking up, talking about coffee. Uh, going to work, talking about coffee. And I, we have not just talking. Last three years, our government have put, put price support and freight support. Uh, we've started that program, and then the SME support. And so we are targeting this, uh, breaking them down to specific ministers so that these programs get managed by uh, minister proper at a micro level. And we get to achieve outcomes in the next uh, two weeks. We will give specific production target for coffee and oil palm and all our commodities. And the Honorable Joe Cooley, by the way, comes from the Wagi Valley, one of the biggest places in which coffee is like food for them. The Honorable Brian Kramer, uh, we combine labor and immigration together. Uh, the Honorable Brian Kramer is tasked with have list of business, police that no outsiders work in spaces where Papua New Guineans should be working on. Good, good foreigners come in in the immigration space. There's a lot of dark areas in this area. The Honorable Brian Kramer goes to tidy, and instead of keeping immigration and labor separate, we amalgamated uh, or brought them back under one minister under the supervision of the Honorable Brian Kramer. Minister for Mining is a very experienced politician who's come back now. The Honorable uh, Honorable uh, uh, Anupala, say Anupala. Uh, he will work with us to drive some of the projects that are outstanding, as well as uh, stabilizing the place. Uh, the Honorable Simon Kilipa is our Minister for Environment and Conservation. And I think I've missed uh, one of our very experienced men, uh, uh, the Honorable Karenga Kua, is our Minister for Petroleum. Uh, so that is the lineup we have today. It is not just an accidental pick or a political rearrangements. We're trying to target in the pool of leaders we have. Uh, uh, placement to the structure we are establishing now to get to achieving an outcome that involves securing the safety of our country, growing the economy and allowing efficiency of services to serve our people better 
not just for today, but more importantly, road to 50 years and beyond as we come facing 2020, 2025 and beyond and going forward. Well, it's a mouthful, but thank you very much. I, th I think I've uh, outlaid to you everything that is uh, uh, before, uh, before you. I have absolute trust and confidence in the team we have here. Uh, we will hit the ground running, and I do appreciate the caucus that gives us this mandate. Uh, the rest of the caucus, the Pango Party caucus, the uh, rest of our coalition partners who are with us. Uh, some one-man parties have missed out in the, in, the, in the portfolio distributions, but there are enough spaces in Vice Ministry. Uh, we're trying to reform, but the Vice Ministers are not just holding office, but they get to actually uh, work in the policy space, in the action, action areas, <coughs> as well as the parliamentary committees that will be revamped under the Marape Rosso government and the Pango Party's words, we want to make parliament committee system work again. And of course, parliament is not the executive government. The, those who miss out, including our governors, will work in the parliamentary committees to hold the executive government to check and balance to ensure what we commit to do gets done, especially what is financed, get delivers, get deli uh, deli uh, deli 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 delivered to our people. I'm all right, thank you too much. Sorry me talk to Lombla, but I'm, I'm, I'm now a uh, press occasion okay, limit today. Uh, one or two questions, sorry, uh, in, in, uh, in, in closing, uh, Bougainville will have a specific minister allocated on its own uh, in respect to uh, Bougainville as uh, very important for us in the upcoming uh, two or three, four years going forward. And uh, we have not yet allocated a minister for Bougainville. I'm looking in a rank and file with someone who could anchor this work going forward. Uh, it is not a lightweight matter. It has key fundamental constitutional questions. It has key fundamental uh, 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 activities that will decide the sovereignty and the union we have today. So it's not a lightweight matter. Uh, I could have remained it at my level, uh, but we are thinking of giving it to someone who could have a specific day job full time on this issue, uh, giving respect to what Bougainville is to us and the issues that are outstanding. All right, thank you too much. All right. Any question, no gather? We have uh, two women in parliament today, uh, two women in parliament, and they are equally very, very qualified uh, women in parliament. Uh, uh, they, in fact, uh, the Honorable uh, Kesi uh, Sawang uh, is a member of the uh, People's Reform, People's First Party, by the way. Uh, however, in the, in the mix of uh, cabinet distribution, uh, uh, the numbers could not sustain. Uh, and then we had uh, two, two, uh, two ministers from Medang that has emerged. And so uh, in that context, uh, she missed it out, but she's in the mix uh, for us to get, in, get her involved. Uh, I consulted her, I did uh, inform her what is happening. Uh, she was gracious with her words. She said, I'm here. Minister or not, I'm here to offer services. Uh, I just want to encourage Papua New Guineans to think away from the gender issue. Uh, ministers here, we represent all the women too anyway. We represent all the women anyway. Let's not make gender become an issue all the time. Uh, we represent women here and uh, we will step up to carry a woman. All of us have wife in a house. All of us have sister. All of us have daughter. And I've made it one of my statements, my objective in life. In the next 10 years, I want to make Morocco safe for my daughter to walk around at night. If I deliver this in the next 10 years, I would have achieved. Uh, and for me, that is one of the crudest measurement of my contribution to our country. And so I just want to ask you a woman folk, just because no woman is in parliament, uh, in cabinet at the moment, doesn't mean this uh, jolly good blocks I have here, gentlemen I have here, uh, don't represent the woman interest. Uh, uh, she was right there for us to pick, uh, but in terms of the numbers and the cabinet mix and the provincial representations, uh, she couldn't uh, come through. Just like I said, for the hell of leaders, Mr. Something we must make here. There is no woman leader or man leader. We are leaders for our country.
And so I encourage Papua to think away from this Western concept of gender rights. Let me repeat, this Western con concept of gender rights. Papua New have always respected the women. We have instances of abuse, I acknowledge, but Papua New have given great prominence to women. 30% of our country are matrilineal society. We had women leaders in 1978, three years after independence. Australia produced the first woman leader 40 years after independence. So I just want to make this statement a statement of thank you to the country. All right, thank you too much. Thank you. Minister Duma will possibly be calling a press conference tomorrow to announce some good news in the telecom space. So please prepare this question and go and shoot him there. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, Duma. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, no, no. Thank you.